Many men come in to see me because they've had a semen analysis done which shows no sperm in the ejaculate. They're, of course, devastated by this diagnosis. But just because there's no sperm in the ejaculate does not mean that they cannot go on to have biological children. So 60% of the couples who experience infertility will have a male factor issue, which needs to be addressed. Uh, a recent study showed that even if a couple is going to be undergoing in vitro fertilization with taking the sperm and injecting it directly into the egg, their results will be better if a treatable condition for male infertility has already been taken care of. So it is very important in these situations that the men be evaluated and their fertility capacity be maximized. The first thing that has to be done is a really sophisticated semen analysis because sometimes men have very low levels of sperm in the ejaculate that are not seen by a semen analysis done at a conventional lab. If a man has no sperm in the ejaculate, it can be for two main reasons. One is it can be that he makes good levels of sperm, but they can't get out. They're blocked in some way. So we call this obstructive, meaning blocked, azospermia, no sperm in the ejaculate. Some of the reasons for this can be genetic. One of the most common things we see are men who actually are missing the ducts. It's almost like they were given a vasectomy at birth. Um, but they still have good production. Another option besides testicular sperm extraction combined with in vitro fertilization is to try to figure out in advance which men will actually have sperm in the testis. There's a relatively new technique called sperm mapping where uh, the testis can be mapped to see whether or not there are any sperm there. The advantage of this is that if sperm are found in certain locations, then later we can go back to those locations, look for sperm, and use those for in vitro fertilization uh, and injecting the sperm directly into the eggs. The procedure itself uh, sounds much worse than it is. It involves giving a local anesthetic, and then once the testis is numb, putting many needles in and aspirating out a little bit of tissue uh, in a grid. Then each one of those slides is looked at individually and the question is, are there any sperm in those areas? If there are sperm, then the couple can proceed with the in vitro fertilization. The other advantage is that if there are no sperm found on this procedure, then the couple does not have to go through the in vitro fertilization. One of the main causes of male infertility is varicoceles. So varicoceles are dilated veins in the scrotum. Uh, most men have seen women with varicose or men with varicose veins in their legs. This is the same idea, but in the scrotum. The way veins work is they bring the blood back up to the heart. And the way they do that is that they have a series of one-way valves, which allows the blood to go back up, but not go back down into whatever area it's draining. If those valves are not working, then the blood collects in the lowest area. We don't know why this extra blood has a negative effect on the sperm production. The most probable theory is that it warms up the testis and that that has a negative effect on the sperm production because the testis is supposed to be kept a little bit lower than body temperature. There are different ways to fix a varicocele, to perform a varicocelectomy. Um, the way that Virtually all of us in this field who specialize in male infertility uh, repair varicoceles or do varicocelectomies is called a microscopic subinguinal varicocelectomy. I am one of those uh, lucky people um, who loves what they do. It's an unbelievably rewarding job because basically I go into work every day and I help people have families, um, become intimate again, make their uh, love life better. Um, basically, to me, the most important things in life are uh, marriage and family. And uh, I'm in a unique position to really help people both create families and to make their uh, marriages and relationships better.